Hello and welcome to the iSpy app tutorial. We're going to be using Thunkable today to make an iSpy app that teaches younger users how they can be responsible at home. So some examples we might use would be a recycling example or fire safety, pet care, and I'm sure you could come up with a lot more ideas for this. So today we're going to make our iSpy app in Thunkable, thunkable.com, click sign in, and then we're going to be using the Android um, side of Thunkable. So we're going to make an Android app. When you get to this screen, it looks like um, we have a bunch of apps here that either other people have made or you've made in the past. We're going to ignore those and just click on create new app and put in our title for our app. I'm going to do I Spy, and I want mine to be called um, I Spy Recycling. But you might make yours uh, whatever topic you are going to do. So I Spy Recycling is the name of my app, and when you go into that app, you're going to see our main screen in Thunkable, which is where we can design our app and do some coding. So go ahead and click on your app, and this is our simulator. So this is where we have what the app will look like on a mobile device. On the left-hand side, we have all these categories in our palette, which is where we'll drag things over onto the screen. And on the right-hand side is where we find the properties of the things that we drag over, the components. Um, and we can change those properties and, and kind of personalize our app that way. So the first thing that we need, um, since we're going to be doing an iSpy app, we want it to look like uh, this. So on my screen one, I want to have a picture of a house with some stars on top of it. We're going to do three different stars. And it says choose a star to start. And when they tap on this first star here, it will open a new screen that is, this looks like a kitchen. So I'm titling that page kitchen. So when this star is tapped, the kitchen page will open and the question says, can you spy the item that cannot be recycled? And there's a newspaper here, a bottle on the counter, a soda in the fridge and an apple core in the fridge. And what we want to happen is when they tap on that apple core, it will ding, make a sound of, yay, you did it, that's correct. And maybe when they tap on the other items, they hear a negative sound. Um, it's like they, they didn't win, right? So we're gonna work on all of those features and learn how to code all of that. It's also important that we have a back button on our second screen as well. And then our screens three and four will be just like this one, but with different rooms. So let's work on our screen one right now. So in order to do this interactive uh, stuff here with the different stars on top of another image, we need to use what's called a canvas. So in this category, drawing and animation, we need to drag a canvas over to our screen. We want this canvas to be a certain size. I'm going to set it over here to 280 pixels by 280 pixels. That way it's a square and it fills the majority of our screen, but not the whole thing because we have other things we need to put on there. So 280 pixels by 280 pixels. Um, and then after that, we're going to do a label underneath there that says choose a star to start. So let's go back up to user interface and pick up a label and drag that over. To change the text of this label, we can look under properties, scroll down a little bit, it says text. We're going to do choose A. And then um, let's make it bold up here, font bold, and we'll change the size. Uh, let's try 20 there. Choose A, and then we need to do an image here of the star, because if you remember, choose a star to start. So I'm going to pick up an image placeholder. This isn't actually a star or anything. It's just a placeholder for an image. And then we're going to do our second label underneath that that says to start. So choose a something to start. And I'm going to make that the same uh, bold and same size as I did before. You could change the color of this too. You can also change the background color of your app. Um, of this whole screen by clicking on screen one and changing uh, the background color here. So maybe we'll do um, like a yellow. Okay, so now I need to get a picture of the house on the canvas here. So if I click on the canvas and I go to background image, you'll notice that there's nothing there. I need to upload a file. Before I can upload a file, I need to find one that is okay to use for a project like this. We want to find a copyright friendly image. So do me a favor and open a new tab and go to images. And in settings, go to advanced search. The reason we're going to do an advanced search is because we want to find images that 
people have said are okay to use for a project like this. We don't want to just steal the first house image that we see on Google. So I'm going to type in house and we're going to fill the top line out and the very bottom line on this screen. So again, we're in advanced search and we're going all the way down to usage rights. We want to make sure that it's free to use or share even commercially because you never know, you could sell your app someday, right? Um, and so we have all these different options for houses. You can choose whatever you'd like, but I would, I would caution you to choose something simple. If it's too detailed, your star might not show up. I like this one right here, so I'm going to click on it, and then I will right click. I like this because the background is um, transparent because it's gray and white squares. I can tell that that's going to show up transparent in my app instead of um, a white background. So let's go ahead and do this. I'm right clicking and saving the image as, and I'm going to rename it as house so I can find it easily later. It's important to rename it um, as well because when you go back into Thunkable, you're going to have them, you'll store the pictures here and it will be easier to realize or recognize which ones you want in the future. So choose file. I'm going to find the picture that I just downloaded and click OK. And there we go. So the picture is filling the space of the canvas, which is perfect. That's what I want. Um, and then I'm going to get my star here for the image. So let's go to picture again. I can see that I have house there, but now I need to find a star and upload that because I don't want to put a little house there. I want to find a star. So now that you've done the settings labeled for reuse, you can just keep searching up top here uh, because we know that these are also going to be labeled for reuse. So you can find a star that you like. I like this blue one. I'm going to right click on it, save image as, rename it as star and click save. When I go back to Thunkable, upload file, choose file again, and star, it will, okay, so there it is. It's huge. All we can see is the top of that star, so we need to re resize it. So with height and width over here, I'm going to um, change the size, and I'm going to do a specific um, number of pixels. So if you remember, from here to here is 0 to 280 pixels. So I don't want it to be 280. I might do something like 40 and see how that looks and do the same with width. So height and width are both 40. That looks pretty good to me. Okay, so choose a star to start. Obviously you can change those as needed. Now the last thing we're gonna do in this video is drag over the image sprites on top of the canvas. So what's an image sprite? Well, that's gonna be our star. So that is an image that you put on top of your canvas that you can interact with. And we wanna be able to tap on these stars to open a new screen. So the same thing, I go over to picture and look, my star is still there, so I don't have to upload it. I can say okay, and looks like I'm gonna to have to do this again. I'm gonna do 40 and 40, because I think that's a good size. So I'm resizing my star and I will put that one here. And I will do another image sprite. I'm going to do three total. And I'm putting them on top of the locations of a house where I'm going to zoom in on the next pages and um, look at the specific rooms. So again, I'm going to find my star. And I'm going to change the height and width to 40 and 40. All right. So we have one more to do. Um, and then I need to show you how to set the... Um, location of these sprites to stay the same regardless of um, where you have placed them in this picture because they can they have a tendency to move around on you. All right so once these are the correct size we want to make sure that the x and y location is that you actually type in a number here. So it has a number here right now, but that could change when you go to test your app. The, the sprites have a tendency to kind of jump around on you. So to set it in place, I'm gonna start with this one right here, which is my image sprite one. I'm gonna go down and I'm just gonna change these numbers to something close to what's already there because it's near where I want it. So 40 and 150, and then I can click away. So I'm just gonna do that for all of them. And on this one, I'm gonna do maybe 120, by 175, and that location is okay, and I'm gonna do the last one. So in the next video, what I'm gonna show you is how to do some of the coding in this app and make the next screens that we need so that we, when we tap on these stars, 
um, we will be taken to the second screen. So I'll see you in the next video.